Hello and welcome back to Mind Money Masters with Cameron. Today we're going to talk about how to start investing in the stock market. You know, the stock market can be daunting, risky, and even downright scary at times with all the fluctuations. And, you know, there are so many financial advisors and gurus out there that will tell you what you should do with your money in the stock market. So in this video, we're going to talk about some basics. What are stocks? How do you buy or sell them? And what research techniques you can use to find the right ones to buy or trade? And of course, lastly, I will give you my final take on the stock market and investing in the stock market. Let's get into it, shall we? Thank you so much for watching. Before we get started, please make sure to go ahead and subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications. This really helps me to be able to offer more content on a consistent basis. Also, please comment on the video with what you liked or what you didn't like and let me know about any topics that you would like me to cover in the world of investing or financial education. Thank you so much. You know, a great quote by Peter Lynch, an important key to investing is to remember that stocks are not lottery tickets. I love this quote since there are so many people out there that believe trading stocks is a way to quote unquote, get rich quick. Many people have gotten rich by the stock market, no denying that, but I can assure you that plenty more have lost everything in that same stock market. There are key factors that make someone successful, but they all boil down to financial education, risk management, plus time. If you don't know who Peter Lynch is, he's an American investor and mutual fund manager, has written many books surrounding the stock market and investing in general. Definitely a strong influencer in the world of investing. So, you know, what are stocks? I realize this might be a little on the beginning basic side, but I wanted to cover all my bases. We get into some more detailed stuff later on. Also, please note that I am not a licensed financial advisor and any information or examples used in this presentation is purely for informational purposes. I'm not offering trading advice. Please reach out to your financial professional for any investing advice. Okay, so that being said, stock is a piece of ownership in a company. There used to be physical certificates that the owner would actually receive whenever they bought a share of stock. My grandfather had several physical stock certificates and now they are nearly 100% digital. I think you can get a certificate if you paid your broker or something extra, it's a fee, but you know, it's not something that's widely encouraged. Owning stock entitles you to a share of the profitability of a company, whether that being in the form of a dividend payment or increased value in the share price. Some companies pay dividends and some do not. A dividend is simply just a sum of money that is paid out from the company to shareholders based on a number of shares a person holds. Stock is offered by a company to get extra capital to fund other projects, potentially to grow the company or increase a budget for research and development. You know, the takeaway here is that a stock is just equity ownership in a corporation. Now, there are two types of stocks common stock and preferred stock. Preferred typically offer a higher dividend payment, but may have some limitations with voting rights. Also, any potential liquidation or bankruptcy of that company, preferred stockholders are paid out first after any debts are paid uh, first. You know, stocks will trade and be quoted with a series of letters. You may have seen this before, but for example, a ticker symbol for Coca-Cola is symbol K-O. Google, also known as Alphabet Incorporated, is G-O-O-G-L. Uh, the symbol for Tesla is T-S-L-A. These are just examples of what they can possibly be. So, okay, so the fun part is actually buying, selling, or trading the stock. You can trade intraday. Uh, you can hold it. Um, we'll get into some more um, approaches here in a little bit, but there are many approaches to stock market investing. There is the buy and hold strategy where you do your research and purchase a stock in a company based on the fundamental and technical strength. You know, there's more on that again on the next slide, but there are day traders who trade multiple times per day. There are swing traders who trade multiple times per week. There are those who buy mutual funds, ETFs, and there are those who trade options. A lot of different things within the stock market, as you can imagine. You know, but for the purposes of this course, we will just discuss trading in general and not get into some more detail regarding mutual funds, ETFs, or options. 
I will be doing a future video where I talk about those. You know, now regardless of what you buy or sell, the bid and ask will remain constant. This is how a quote is shown. Bid, 59.08, ask, 59.10. That's $59.10. You will buy at the ask and sell at the bid. Effectively, this is called the bid and ask because of the market makers. These are large financial institutions that create the market for the stock. You're not actually buying the stock from the company. They will, the market makers will buy your stock for the bid price and sell it to someone for the ask price. Now I know that sounded a little bit confusing and almost opposite than what I just said, but think of it this way, that there are two sides to every coin. So whenever it lands, it should be heads up or heads down. Well, it depends on the perspective from the different, from the floor's perspective. Like for example, it depends on the perspective from where you are. Now, as a personal investor, we buy at the ask price. This is what the market maker is asking for the stock. They are the intermediary. The market maker creates this market to match buyers and sellers, and they take the difference between the bid and the ask as they're cut. Years ago, it was basically quoted in an eighth, so 12 and a half cents was always the spread. That was the lowest spread that it could go. Then it became 16th, and now it's actually pennies. So the difference, as I said, is called the spread. If a quote is showing bid $59.08 and an ask of $59.10, then the spread is two cents. We buy at the ask and sell at the bid to the market maker. They turn around and sell it at the ask and buy it at the bid, profiting two cents off of every share in this example. So just remember, basically for lack of, lack of confusion, we buy at the ask and we sell at the bid. Now, market orders versus limit orders. A market order is saying that whenever you buy or sell, you are willing to take whatever the current price is at that moment, no matter what. So if the price jumps right ahead of when you put in the order, then you will pay the higher price. A limit order states that you will pay that price or better. Now, if you're buying and put a limit order at 5908, then the ask will have to drop to 5908. Remember, we said the ask in that prior example was 5910. Now, conversely, if you're selling and have a limit order in at 5910, the bid would have to increase from 5908 to 5910 or higher in order to your trade to execute. Now, there are other types of limits. There's stop limits, there's trailing stops. Um, I will talk about that probably in another video as well. So in order to be good or really to excel at trading or investing, you must do your research. One of the most common methods to confirm the value of a stock is by evaluating its price earnings ratio or PE ratio. Now, again, I'm not going to go into some really extensive details about PE ratio, um, but you know, must understand that this is just a high level view of what's going on. So just because a stock has a low price doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad investment. And just because a stock is a high, at a high price doesn't mean it's a good investment. So yeah, everything is relative. Don't think low price, bad, high price, good. Here's an example of that. Company A has a price of $10 per share and earnings of $10,000. They have 20,000 shares outstanding in the market. Their earnings per share is 50 cents. So the PE ratio is 20. That's $10 per share divided by earnings per share. Company B has a price of $50 per share and earnings of $40,000. They also have 20,000 shares outstanding in the market. Their earnings per share is 50 cents as well. However, the PE ratio is 100. $50 per share divided by the earnings per share. So in this scenario, company A is only charging $10 per share and their PE ratio is 20. So that means that for every $20 you spend, you get $1 of earnings versus company B with a PE ratio of 100, 
you have to spend $100 to benefit in $1 of earnings. Of course, this is a very simplistic example, but it makes you think just because a company trades at a higher price doesn't always mean it's a better investment. Now, we also want to consider the price and earnings average ratio within that industry. If it is in line with that industry, then that might be a good investment, even if it's higher. If it's not in line with the industry, you have to compare apples to apples. Another key factor I want to bring up is volume. Volume is very important and it equals basically just the number of shares traded by a particular company in a given period of time. I think volume is important since it helps you see how liquid the stock is and if people notice changes in the stock and act accordingly. So for example, if a stock goes up one day and has a really low volume and it goes down the next day on really high volume, maybe the price going up was a fluke or maybe they came out with news the day it went down. Volume helps you see, though, if there are particular changes to a company and gives you a reason to research further. Now, technical research or technical analysis is a very broad topic when it comes to stock investing. Active traders will use this strategy frequently, along with fundamental analysis, which includes price, volume, the earnings per share piece. Fundamental analysis is the profitability of the company. If you are curious about technical analysis, though, I would suggest reading the book Getting Started, in Technical Analysis by Jack Schwager. It will give you an excellent starting point and covers many topics. Um, I will put obviously a link to uh, his book in the description, but you wanna learn as much as you can about the strategies. And if you're interested in financial analysis, definitely, or technical analysis, definitely look into education on this. In stock market investing, you wanna look out for also analyst ratings. Mm -hmm. Typically, any brokerage firm that you open an account with will have a ratings of stock under the research tab for the company you're looking for. The ratings for stocks will give you a recommendation such as buy, hold, or sell. Each analyst gives their reasoning behind the recommendation. So you are able to see why they give their rating. But I would encourage you to look at several different analysts and do your research um, on each analyst as well. What their track record has been, how they've been performing, if previous buy or sell signals were correct, just continue researching as many analysts and rating agencies as you can. Now, I wanna let you know this is just one video in a series of videos tied to investing education. My goal here is to offer financial education to help you think critically in every financial decision and not blindly follow any hot financial tips or stock tips. Or, I've heard many times that if you don't know what to do with your money, don't say it out loud because inevitably someone will tell you what they think they should you should do with your money and that's give it to them. So as you may know by now, I do love suggesting financial education books. Um, I, I will put a couple of these on here. One is The Intelligent Investor. I already mentioned the technical analysis book, but also Why the Rich Are Getting Richer is an excellent book that I've recently read. I started personally trading stocks about 15 years ago, and I enjoy it. I, I still trade, I, I trade multiple different items, and I will get into this in a number of videos, but... I would strongly encourage you to make investing part of your financial freedom plan. Um, you know, one of the main reasons is that stocks are pretty liquid. That means if you need cash quickly, you are able to sell them. And, you know, assuming the volume is strong and you can get in or out of the stock quickly, it might be a very good piece. Uh, another one, owning a business or piece of real estate is a great option. Um, you know, getting money out of a business and real estate could be challenging but they may offer better tax advantages. So one is not necessarily better than the other. Um, you know, there's multiple assets and multiple ways to, to gain success. Any tax questions though, I would direct to your tax advisor. Now, if you are completely unsure at all how to get started owning your own business or even building financial freedom, I will recommend one of the best programs out there that actually literally got me started in digital real estate and digital marketing. It's a fantastic program and the person who started it, I really firmly believe is interested in not only your financial independence, but your personal and physical excellence. I will put the link in the description for that particular program as well. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to go ahead and subscribe uh, to my channel and um, make comments, you know, definitely let me know what you're interested in hearing. 
Here's cheers to your success, and I hope to see you at the top. Thank you again.